Greetings to all. This video was going to be probably short, probably about 30 minutes long, maybe. I'm, this is going to be a short video. Don't plan on covering too much stuff. But I have a little bit of time, so I just wanted to speak on a few things. Basically, what I'm going to cover is uh, all these ancient civilizations, Ezekiel, Solomon, the Hebrews, the Mayans, all these original tribes that were, were looking at their work and their, their graphs and all the stuff that they've drawn. The human brain, us ourselves, we like to logically determine things, to define things. We like to logically think we have an understanding of what we're seeing, what we're showing, what's showing. Unfortunately, though, we're only creating misconceptions by what we're looking at because all these wheels that we're looking at throughout history are there. We have to understand that they were, were limited in sources and even a piece of paper. We're looking at a three dimensional representation on a flat piece of paper on a stone. I mean, wherever they carve these wheels, because it's always a wheel, everywhere they've carved these wheels, they're doing it on flat surfaces. So one cannot draw a three-dimensional object on a two-dimensional object. It doesn't work. So what they're doing when they're drawing these wheels, like I said, in the Mayan calendar, the Aztec calendar, it's not a calendar. Again, it's our misconception. There is not one piece of evidence to show you that that's a calendar. Not at all. And this is why the Mayan calendar was wrong for the world ending in 2012. It's crap. It's not a calendar to begin with. So for you to, to, con to come to that conclusion, it's a misconception. Yet again, we're trying to define what we think we're understanding. We're not. It's not a calendar. It's showing all of us the same thing. And... You can call it God, you can call it whatever you will, but it's the center point. It's the center point to all creation, and it's been hidden from us ever so intelligently. The Nazi empire, the Nazi era, was just about to expose the black sun, which is this center point, all creation. They were just about to expose the black sun and begin teaching their own doctrines on the black sun, which is a big ball of prima... Uh, materia and prima materia is said to be the fifth element just like the ether it's mm -hmm. it's what's creating all things from the point from this formless infinite zero point it's a it's the void in space that's what prima materia is that's what the black sun is it's invisible to the naked eye however it's there and this is the void in space that the Pyth Pyth Pythagoreans were talking about. Pythagoreans said that Earth unfolded from a center of a void, or a void at the center of the universe. And it unfolded. This center point is just that. This is what CERN is trying to hide. This is what NASA is trying to hide. This is what Nimrod was after with his Tower of Babel trying to build a tower up to the sky to reach the black sun, the ball of prima materia. And this is what NASA and CERN are also after, I believe. The same thing. The center point. The source to creation. All creation. The source. And again, Earth did not become a solidified globe with infinite space until we took over the Nazi Empire moved all their scientists here under military capture. And from there, the Nazis were went from hollow and concave Earth to NASA. And we all know what NASA is. So what they did was they very geniusly took the most advanced scientists and researchers that were getting to the bottom of this they were getting to the nitty-gritty that they did not want to expose all this crap. So they took those scientists and moved them here, told them to shut their mouths, 
And they switched to a different name called NASA. So they're no longer Nazis. No one knew they were Nazis at the time. Absolutely nobody. The average person didn't know. But they switched, and they switched their name from Nazis to NASA. That's all that happened. And this is what they're, they're telling you now, is there is no center point to creation. Space is infinite, and you're just lost in it. This is what they're trying to do. They're trying to erase the center point throughout history. And the more that we forget about this center point, which is the source, the more we keep putting source outside of the sphere. Because if you notice, all these are spheres. They're wheels. And every wheel has one center point with equidistant points around it. Equidistant means all evenly spread out from the center point. That's what this is. So what they've done is they've geniusly taken the center point source from creation and they've thrown it some random place in infinite outer space. And this is the problem because when you create infinite outer space, you're creating an infinite amount of possibilities that aren't even real. They're not fucking even real, bro. They're not real. So all these things that we're worrying about, about the sun giving out, the moon exploding or the sun exploding and this giving out, it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And yes, I can say that confidently because I know the true functions of our universe. They even go as far as to tell us that it's an atomic universe with atoms and invisible particles floating all over the place, yet they've never been the input or output of any experiment, ever. Mm -hmm. No one's ever tested atoms being an input or output to any experiment. What they're doing is they're creating invisible particles instead of telling you what is actually happening. It's electrical phenomenon. It's all electrical. It's not an atomic creation. There's not particles that fill the room when, when you turn a light on. Even Tesla said this. Light can only be longitudinal disturbances of the ether. So Tesla very well knew this as well. Light is not an atomic thing. It's not, an at it's not atoms or particles filling a whole room. Everything is a result of the ether, which is the life force, which as I said, the ether only exists. You only find the ether when you put source at center. When source is at the center point, you find the ether, the life force, the fifth element that the Freemasons and all of these people, these secret societies, are keeping from us. And they're not only keeping it from you, they're using it against you as warfare. They're using this against you. And what we can't accept is what we're calling God is none other than the energetic creation itself. This includes the good and the bad. And this is why Christianity and all these religions will not accept God as it energy. Because energy, God is energy, means that it is the good and the bad. It is the existent and non-existent, the aware and the unaware, the life and the death, the male, the female, the dual state of two coming from one center point. And this is what we have to realize. There is nothing in existence outside of your central self. And when I say your central self, I mean your focal point of consciousness. As I said in my last live, when you technically break down what life is, really break down, get to the root, you've never traveled anywhere in your life. You've never been anywhere in your life. And some people will say, well, what do you mean? I'm in this room right now. I'm in this universe right now. I'm feeling this, this reality. So let me explain what I mean. When you break down consciousness, what is consciousness? It's the focal point, the little penal gland, the little center point, the small center point expanding and radiating out to discover itself, to ask questions, to learn about self yet again. And when you're done, you converge back into your true self. But there is nothing in existence in, in a dual state. There is no existence or non-existence outside of the focal point. These are all human-made constructs. Life and death, beginning and end. A beginning and end only exists to a human being. We, we say all the time, people who believe in religions and people who don't believe in a religion, they, they all say the same thing. God is infinite. So what's, what's infinite is through 
the focal point of consciousness, reincarnation, coming back again and again and again in an infinite amount of ways, in an infinite amount of situations, in an infinite, uh, infinite amount of discoveries, infinite amount of veils, infinite amount of characters. And we're all this one little focal point of consciousness experiencing and asking questions of what it is, what we are. And again, if you get to the root of why we even ask questions at all, get to the root of that. Why do you even have any questions at all? We only question because we feel something is out of order. We feel something is not right. Something is chaotic. And what you realize when you find the reality, truth of reality, this whole universe is chaos. However, we fear chaos. We've been trained to fear chaos, fear the chaos, because chaos has been given such a terrible name as Terence McKenna says. Terence McKenna said this very same thing. Chaos has been given a horrible name, and so we fear it. This entire reality is chaotic. When you find the source, though, which is the center point, it's very, very, very easy to match the micro with the macro. You're the micro. The universe is the macro. And I've said this in my last live, too. The principle does not change because what you realize, the more that you study the micro, the macro, you're filling in gaps between the two. The more you answer these questions and the more that you narrow it down, you converge those two into one because this is what, this is all it is. This whole reality is a dual state of two micro and macro, for example, it's a dual state, mm -hmm. and the more you narrow this duality down, the more it narrows into one. And this is what we try and prolong. This is what we try and put off because we're scared. It's a, it's a, we're afraid. We don't want to accept that we may be it. There is nothing outside of yourself, outside of your central self, not your body, outside of your central self. This is what we're born knowing. Loneliness, when you break down what loneliness is, Loneliness is the fact, uh, inevitable fact of human existence. We are aware that everything has an end. Human existence is, is eventually, what we say is going to eventually end, give out. It's the inevitable fact of human existence. That's what loneliness is. And it's because your subconscious mind already knows it is just you. There's nothing outside of this but you. Yes, everybody else is in existence and you see them and they're real and they talk and this and that, but they're still you. And this is where the root of loneliness comes from. We are aware subconsciously that all of this is just ourself. It's all us. And so we're, it can drive some people mad. They don't want to accept that this is all us. The one you see in the mirror, the person I'm looking at right now, which is the me, right? Or so I think. This is who we are. The mirror image, this is who we are, this is all we've known our whole lives. However, this is not your mirror. The one I'm looking at right now, this is not who I am. This is not my mirror. What's my mirror is everything outside of the body. Any single thing from my range of sight that I am seeing, anything outside of my range of sight is my mirror. This is me. This whole entire room, this whole entire creation is me. This is why we are born into a veil, into a character, having questions. Because you are everything around you. You're not the body. You're everything outside of the body, trapped or, or sent into a body. I don't want to say trapped because that's a bad word. Some people, as I said, if you view... Life in, in, in this reality, in the skin, as a prison, then your prison it will become. If, if this is a trap and a prison to you, then you have granted yourself your, your key to, to your prison. And only you can free yourself because you're choosing to look at it as hell, as a prison, as a trap. So the more when you once you find the center point, once you find the source, and this is what's so with me, 
I'll share my personal experience. What led me into atheism before, long before this, I'm talking no creator, no source of energy, just nothing at all. This is my, my, my definition of an atheist. No creator, no energy, no anything. Just we're here on accident. No energy, though. What led me to be an atheist back in the time was NASA, our Earth. I didn't even study myself. I studied our Earth. I studied our universe. And I said, well, it doesn't make any sense. There's no source to any of this. Sure, we exploded, okay, from, from one big star out, but there's no source to creation. We're on this ball, and we're looking out into a vastness of, of black infinite space that never ends. So in there lies the problem that there is no source, absolutely no source. If something is infinite, and again, the human mind, I've said this so many times, the human mind will never, ever, 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 ever comprehend what the word infinite means. We don't understand the word, the definition of infinite. We don't. Us trying to describe the infinite is us putting a name to something that, that we, we cannot explain. Infinite means no beginning, no end. We know nothing about that in the skin. We were born with a beginning and an end. We will die someday. There is our end in the skin. So all we're confined to is beginning and end. The song we listen to, the movie we're watching, the video game we're playing, beginning and end. All is being confined by beginning and end. So the human brain will never ever be able to understand something that's always been because we're confined into this space here. And the more you look at yourself as the body, the more tight this feels. You feel your poor, this, this poor body, this poor me, instead of being all of this. Exactly right, Tom. It's all it is, is a projection. It's a projection, just like a projector in class. You see, you see, when you look at the projector from a far away, you see how it's one little small point and it slowly narrows out into a wide triangle-like looking thing. If you've ever looked at a projector from a far away, you see how when you look at the, at the lens, you see one point and then it slowly spreads out and gets wider as it's as casting out. That's exactly what consciousness is. We're beginning as a seed as of the point, this one small little point, and we're slowly projecting ourselves out. The more we learn, the more we grow, the more we comprehend, the more answers or the questions we answer, the, the greater this, this grows. The greater our seed grows from source, from itself. The more we're learning about self. And we're sharing it with other people, like I'm sharing with everyone, to let us know, yet again, this is who we are. We are the focal point, not the body. We are the center point. And again, it's always been a wheel. It's our misconception to look at a flat piece of paper that's showing you a wheel, and you're illogically assuming that this, this is a flat, it's a flat circle representing a flat circle because you're seeing it on a flat piece of paper. That's our, our, our misconception. And this is why I said in a status, the governments and these elite people, these occultists that are running the universe and controlling it, they want, they want us to keep looking at all of this crap from the universe, from uh, the ancient civilizations, these circles, and say that they're flat flat maps. They want us to say that they're flat, that they're two-dimensional. They want us to keep doing this because we're not even getting close to the picture. We're missing the entire concept of what they're showing us. The wheels, the wheels that we're being shown is us. This is us. Look at your eyeball. Look at your eyeball. Look at your belly button. Look at your belly button. The belly button is your center. The belly button is your center. That's why you're birthed from the womb. From the womb out. From the center of the womb out. From micro to macro. Again. So from the micro, you're birthed from the womb. From the macro, you're birthed from the prima materia. The center. The black sun. This void in space 
and everything that's being cast out, which I said yesterday in my live or, or two days ago, magnetism is the only thing that's giving all things create to creation mass, volume. So the only reason we have a definition to us, a shape, a form, is because we were manifested from this prima materia, which is formless energy, and we're manifested outward into this sphere as energy, as a form, which is in the skin. And we can only experience this through magnetism. But again, you can't have magnetism without the dielectric field. It begins a dielectric field, which is a formless void, until that dielectric field experiences a loss of inertia. And from that a loss of inertia, it twists into a hyperboloid, into a torus field. And that's where you get a three-dimensional torus field. So dielectricity and magnetism are the two life forces, or they're not really two, they're two of the one and the same. So I shouldn't, I shouldn't confuse people with that. Magnetism and dielectricity are the same thing. It's like heads and tails to a coin. They're both a coin. It's, it's one coin, two sides, it's just the same thing. Dielectricity and magnetism are one coin, basically, two sides. Two field modalities to the ether, or vril, or zen, or, or chi, whatever you want to call it. But this is why it's always been a wheel. And the government is loving the fact that these people are looking at these on a flat paper and saying that these are flat earth maps. These are flat earth maps. They're not. They're three-dimensional, and I said this yesterday. For one to see, you're seeing your reality, everything outside of you, in three dimension. The trees, the cars, everything is in 3D. So how would you get on an airplane seeing in 3D and go up and look down and see your own home in 2D? So you're telling me the higher I go, the, my, my, my sight drops from three dimension to two dimension. Let's be realistic. No. No. And as I covered yesterday, I covered the maps. I covered the maps. And there, when you narrow down the maps, thanks to Gemini's brilliant work as well, br brilliant, Gemini helped me figure out all this stuff. Gemini helped me figure out all this stuff. And he's the one who actually got me on board and actually showed me the maps. But when you narrow down the maps and you get to the core of it, the UTM map is the only map that's correct. It's the most accurate, and it's the only one being used by the people who are ruling our world. There's a reason for that, because that is the map that's correct. And as I said, we're not outside of the ball, we're inside of it. So you take the UTM map that they're telling you you fold out, you take the UTM map and fold it in, and you'll see that it connects perfectly. So why can we fly from one spot straight and come and end back in the same spot again? Because we're inside of a wheel. We're inside of a ball. And this is what this means. Order of the black wheel matrix. This is what this means. There is a specific order to all of this. It's in perfect synchrony. It's in perfect order around a wheel principle. It's always around a wheel principle. The sun and the moon rotate around this, this inner wheel. The sun and moon rotate around this inner wheel. A compass will show you it always works around the inner wheel. A clock, a wheel. All things are working around the center point because we're inside of this wheel. The constellations, the seasons, the moon phases... Even the moon phases, all working around a wheel principle. This is why Solomon, Ezekiel, the Mayans, the Aztecs, all of them, even Nikola Tesla himself, his favorite shape, his favorite geometrical shape was a sphere. Three-dimensional. That's what we have to remember. A circle, when you say the word circle, you're talking about a two-dimensional flat circle. So this is a circle. If I were to bring this into 3D, it's now a sphere. 
This is representing a sphere. And if I wasn't here, because this is my, my work, I drew this. But if I wasn't here to speak to people and say, this is representing a three-dimensional sphere, because it is. Most flat earthers would look at this and say it's a flat earth map. Because it's two-dimensional on a flat piece of paper. But as I said, you cannot draw a three-dimensional object on two-dimensional objects. That's common sense. So my point is, is the earth be only became flat through human misconceptions. That's how the earth became flat. Yes, it appears flat, but your eyes are deceiving you. It's very easy when you understand how, how broad the, the electromagnetic spectrum is, which is what we're able to see. You understand that you're missing out on half of the phenomenon that's taking place. You're seeing this much of the EM spectrum, and the EM spectrum is all of this right here. Yet you're taking in this much, and you think that your eyes are actually showing you the truth. And this is why it's such a great argument, because their argument is, well, why don't you trust your eyes? You don't trust your own eyes? If you don't believe your own eyes, then something's wrong with you. That's their, their, their premise on it. Sounds good. Until you understand light propagation, until you understand the EM spectrum, until you start looking at things into more detail. Instead of just going on YouTube, listening to anybody, including myself, I, I'd love for people to, to research and, and, and do the same stuff I'm doing. Because you'll get the same conclusion. It's irrefutable. You'll come to the same conclusion I did. If you actually do the steps. I showed light propagation yesterday on a ferro cell. That's showing you light working and being distorted inside of a magnetic field. And as I said, it's vital to study that because the entire universe is governed by electromagnetism. You want to understand light propagation, you have to study it. You can't just say, show me the curve, 8 inches per mile squared, and that you're not doing the work. You listen to a video, you heard somebody else say 8 inches per mile, and show me the curve, and now it's just repeat, 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 repeat. The very habits of insanity, doing the same thing again and again and again, and getting the same result. And of course, they always say, once you go flat, you never go back. This is pure incorrect, pure I'm going to say it. It's, it's, it's not true. Once you go flat, you either stay stuck in that, that idea of thinking because you've now closed your mind off to even explore further or you realize you have to question everything now but you stay open and you're willing to still investigate further. But the problem with the Flat Earth community is Majority of them, once you find out you've been lied to and you get a slight understanding of, of the lie, you feel you have the answer. You feel you have it. And you don't want to think on anything else but this because you feel like you finally have it. But all it's done is really expose the lie to you. There's far too many questions of the flat earth community cannot answer. There's far too many questions. Far too many. And when you start researching the concave model, all these questions that the flat model does not answer is filled in easily with logical explanation through the concave model. Like, why is the stars doing a, a wheel? Why are the stars on one hemisphere going this way? Why are the stars on this hemisphere going this way? I showed that yesterday. Again, get a ferro cell. Mm -hmm. Get a ferro cell, put a magnet sideways. You'll see the plane of inertia in the center, which is the center part of the, the celestial sphere where the stars are going straight up. And then you've got the right side going right and the left side going left. And that's the pulls to the magnet, which are hypertrochoid patterns. The, these are the pulls.
And as I said, once you match the micro to the macro, it simply confirms this very understanding. Space is not outside the, the ball we're in, it's inside the ball we're in as the source, mm -hmm. as the prima materia, as what's created everything. It is the void in space. This is the, the manifestor of our universe. This is the one true light of our universe, the black sun. And this is why all things work around a wheel dynamic. And this is why long after I'm dead, the wheel will still be being drawn, still be being shown, always. Because we're going to come back and realize again and again and again and again, it will always and only ever be a wheel because it's the only way it works. When you study astrology, it reveals this very understanding to you. It's almost staring at you in the face. There's 12 sections here. And I took this logo from the Black Sun logo from the, the, the Nazis because we're not allowed to post the Black Sun logo on Facebook or you'll get, you'll get f Facebook jailed for it. You're not allowed to. I've done it twice and I've been Facebook jailed twice for it. So I'll be damned if I do it again. So this was my basic representation of that. There's 12 um, sections because, you know, it's the 12 months. It's the Zodiac chart. It's your 12 o'clock. It's the, the clock. It's everything in one circle. And it always works around the center point, as I said. There's only one way it's possible for all things to work around a wheel dynamic and around one center point. There's only one way it's possible. And as I said, it's staring at you in the face. You're inside of the wheel. And that's why everything is able to work around this wheel principle. It's the only way it works. Credit to Matt Jerome. I've given him so much credit on my video that's received the most views, which was 12,000 views. I gave him a shout out and in return, he deleted me. So you can take that comment and take it somewhere else. How about that? I gave that guy a nice shout out with one of my videos that had the most views on it. And he turns around and deletes me. Okay, so there's credit for that. And one thing I will say is he's not giving credit to the people who taught him. He's telling people he created all this himself and thought of it from his head. Not true. These have been around since before any of us were alive. These have been around since the Egyptians, okay? So this isn't anyone's work. For somebody to say they thought of all this themselves, it's a lie. You're simply not giving credit to the ones before you. Because we all want to be it. We all want to be right. We all want to be the one guy. Ego. Ego divides. Spirit leads back to one. To connect. I give well-deserved credit when it's deserved. Believe that. But it's still love. I'm mad. I'm mad at nobody. I'm not mad at anybody. It's still love for everyone. I don't have nothing bad to say about him, and I'm not talking bad about him. I'm simply just stating a fact real quick. I gave him a shout-out. He deleted me the next week. Okay? But I see, I saw one question on here asking what Satori is. So I'm going to cover that topic next and then I'm going to end this video because I have to go. I'm kind of pressed for time this morning. But, um, so to attain Satori, it's, it's, it's what we're all subconsciously seeking our whole lives. We're all looking for an answer greater than ourselves. We're all looking to find this great awakening, which is what we're calling it, the great awakening and that's what Satori is. Satori is a Zen Buddhist word for sudden enlightenment, for oh, an awakening. So when you attain Satori, it's you realizing the fact of yourself. 
It's you realizing the fact that there is nothing but the central self. As I said, the central self is not anything that has a definite form, a shape, or, or, or mass, or volume, or anything at all. As I said earlier, the, the battle of the mind between real and fake, or, or aware and unaware, and, and existence and non-existence, life and death, it's still illusionary. It's not real. Duality only exists through the finite. Because when, as I said, all is one. There is no duality in your true state of being. You are both faces of the duality of the dual state. Becoming aware of yourself. And so when you attain Satori, when you come to the great realization of self, you've now found what, you, what, what most are calling God. And as I said, there's a slight grieving process to this because you've always pictured this great Savior, this magnificent Savior outside of yourself. And it can't ever be you. It has to be something other than yourself. And this is what most frightens us because we don't want to think that we are our own Saviors. We are it. Yeah, if you're looking for information on the Black Sun, look at my wall, look at Gemini's wall. Gemini's wall is more more uh, detailed and focused on the Black Sun and concave Earth science. But we also have a group, uh, me and him together, called Concave Earth, the Electric Universe, and Wheelwork. These are our basic principles and fundamentals of the universe. It's electric and it's wheelwork. It's all wheelwork. So you can feel free to, to uh, search the group, Concave Earth, Electric Universe. Or as I said, uh, check out Gemini's page, add Gemini. Check out my page. And in the group that we have, you'll find a lot more people who are, are posting about this as well. Um, Lee Steele and uh, his other page, I think it's Kane Cave. He posts good stuff too. But yeah, just if you find the group, you'll find a whole bunch of like-minded people in that group that post on it. Great information. And it's not nonsense. It's not stuff that you can't do for yourself. It's not it's not eight inches per mile. It's not things that are repeating. It's evidence. It's science. It's visual proof. Dean, that's the guy's name. I'm sitting here trying to think of his name. Bless him. Dean Gold, yes. Dean Gold too. He's a, he's a good dude. And if you guys want anything, um, any positivity at all, you, um, Tom Wilkinson is a, a good person, good guy, full of love, and he's full of positivity. Full of uplifting posts, knowledgeable posts, all type, very broad, broad uh, criteria. I have to wrap this video up though, because I'm running short on time here. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna finish it with this, basically. Um, mm -hmm. It's very obvious when you study the universe, when you study history, you see that it's always been a wheel. And in mo more recent times, it was concave and hollow through the Nazi empire. That was the most recent of times. The Nazi empire was just about to expose and solidify. I'm talking about kicking completely out the idea that we're outside of a ball. Because not only were they were going to teach this, but they were going to give you, give us the science behind it, the logic behind it. They were going to write books behind it. They were about to start their own doctrine. In Wellsburg Castle, they had the Black Sun logo down in the castle. What they were planning on doing with that castle was starting a school. 
And they could not do that because the, you know, that's when the, the World War II started. Thanks to Winston Churchill and all the elites, they, were, they would be damned if they let them start their own schooling teaching about the real force and our, our universe. Because as I said, you're not just learning about the universe. When you, when you study the universe from this aspect, with the center point, mediating and necessitating all things at, the distance, at a distance, this is when you find the ether force. The life force, or ether, which is the fifth element, it doesn't exist until you put the center point at center. Until you find the source. That's when you find the ether. That's what Tesla did. That's why Tesla's favorite geometrical shape is a sphere. That's why the famous picture of Tesla with his head down reading a book and behind him is a wheel with a center point and a wheel. His induction motor, all of his tech was a wheel. Rotating magnetic fields, it was a wheel. All of Tesla's work was a wheel. And it will only repeat and repeat and repeat as history goes on. The next Nikola Tesla, the next Aztec uh, uh, culture, the next Mayan culture, the next Egyptian culture, will still be drawing wheels until human existence. Always. So as I said, once you put source at center, every other question falls right into place. Your answer is revealed to you because you've now located the source and you're seeing this in three dimension, not two. That Exactly. That's why they don't teach us Tesla. And that's another reason they don't teach us about the Nazi empire, the true Nazi empire. Not what we've been taught to believe about the Nazis. They won't teach you about them because they've labeled all of their, their hovercrafts as UFO technology, as alien technology. And so now we're creating the misconceptions into everyone else that aliens are real and that UFOs are something that, that's far beyond our comprehension. And it's not that, that, that complex. A UFO is not anti-gravity, it's electromagnetic tech. It's as simple as that. They overcomplicate the scenario or the, or the technology so the average person thinks it's something so great beyond their comprehension, and it's not. It's electromagnetism. It's not anti-gravity. And so anything that we're labeling as alien work, alien technology, alien construction, it's humans that are doing it. We're just unaware and we don't comprehend the knowledge behind it so we're labeling it something foreign something beyond our comprehension which is the only word alien and that's why we give things the word alien 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 all that means is you don't comprehend it it's beyond your comprehension and there's nothing wrong with that there's nothing wrong with that but i'm just saying we're labeling these things we're giving these things title words, alien, foreign, uh, UFOs, because we don't understand the dynamics of the technology. But it's not as complex as we think it is. Just like the pyramids. Those of you that know what Birkeland currents are, Birkeland currents is the same thing that... Or, Birkeland currents or plasma filaments, you can call them one or the same. They're both one and the same thing. Birkeland currents or plasma filaments. But the plasma filaments is the purple electric uh, zaps that you see coming out of Tesla's coils. Those big uh, Tesla coils with the purple lightning or electricity coming out of it and doing all type of cool stuff. Those are plasma filaments. And it's the same thing with the pyramids we're doing. The pyramids were extracting plasma from the sky. From the source, from the center point, that's what they were doing. Extracting the primal materia, the energy from the sky, through the top. Through a Birkeland current, plasma filament. Same concept as Tesla's coil. But I'm going to wrap up this video. I got to go, so... Thanks for all who watched.
Um. Oh yeah, nothing happened to us. He just deleted me. Nothing happened to us though. He just deleted me for some strange reason. I don't know, but it's all good. Like I said, everyone have a good day. If y'all got any questions, please feel free to inbox me, ask me anything you want. And thanks for watching.